In this lesson, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. This first definition says an equation involving x and y, which is not solved for y, is said to define y implicitly in terms of x. So here's an example of an equation in implicit form, where you can see the x's and y's are mixed on the same side. If we wanted to take the derivative of this, we could solve for y, and we would put the equation in explicit form. So we'd say y equals 1 over x. And now that it's in explicit form, we could rewrite this as x to the negative 1 and then take the derivative using the power rule. When we have an equation like this, where we have x's and y's also on the left side, we could still get it into explicit form. But you can see in an equation like this, it's not as convenient to take the derivative because you have this plus or minus here. And again, in this last equation, you still have x's and y's jumbled up on the left side. But because we have y times sine of y, it's going to get really challenging to try to rewrite it in explicit form. And so that's why we have this process called implicit differentiation to be able to take a derivative of something in this form. So this note says we can differentiate the above equations using implicit differentiation. This method consists of differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x and then solving the resulting equation for y prime or dy dx in order to find its derivative. This example says consider the equation the x squared plus y squared equals 25. We're going to find dy dx using implicit differentiation. When doing this, the key is remembering that you're taking the derivative with respect to x. So for this first term, when we take the derivative with respect to x, we get 2x. This next term has a y in it. So we're taking the derivative of y squared. You still take the derivative, so you get 2y. Because this is a non-x term, it's going to generate a dy dx. Over here you have a constant. The derivative of a constant is just 0. And I made a note over here. It says every non-x term will generate a dy dx. So again, when we took the derivative implicitly, this is an x term, so you just take its derivative. The non-x term right here, you take its derivative 2y, and then you tack on a dy dx, and this is a constant, the derivative of a constant is 0. The next step is you're going to isolate the dy dx. Next, divide both sides by 2y, and then when you simplify, you get negative x over y. Part b says to find an equation of the tangent line to the circle at the point 4, 3. To find the equation of a tangent line, we need point and slope. We already have our point, and we have an expression for slope, so we're going to take these values and plug it in. So notation, I just wrote m equals dy dx, such that, and we're plugging in 4, 3. So here's our slope, and our point is 4, 3, and we're going to plug all of this into the point slope formula. And here's our equation of the tangent line. You can leave your answer like this, but I'm going to rewrite it in slope-intercept form so that we can look at the graph. So here we have the equation y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 25 over 3. All right, and then here is a circle with center at 0, 0, and radius of 5. And you can see when I graph this tangent line, go up 8 and a third, and then your slope is down 4 over 3. And that tangent line is hitting the circle right at the point 4, 3. This example says find dy dx given y to the 4th plus 3y minus 4x cubed equals 5x plus 1. So because we're taking dy dx, that's the derivative with respect to x, so that means any non-x term, we're going to generate a dy dx. So the derivative of y to the 4th is 4y cubed, and because that's a non-x term, we're going to generate a dy dx. The derivative of 3y is going to be 3, and then we multiply by dy dx. This is an x term, so we're just going to take its derivative. And then again, the derivative of 5x is just 5, and the derivative of this constant is 0. At this point, we want the dy dx terms to be on one side and the non-dy dx terms on the other side of the equation. We want to solve for dy dx, so now we're going to factor out dy dx from both of these terms on the left. And finally, we're going to divide this expression out from both sides of the equation. So dy dx equals 12x squared plus 5 over 4y cubed plus 3. This example says use implicit differentiation to find an equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. So here's our equation, and the point is 2 comma 1. So we're going to start by taking the derivative implicitly with respect to x. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. For this next term, because we have a product, we have 2x times y. We're going to use the product rule in order to take the derivative. So I set this up over here, 
The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of y is 1, but then we're going to times by dy dx. And again, that's because this is a non-x term. So even when you're doing the product rule, you still want to abide by the implicit differentiation rule. So again, this is an x term. We take the derivative, we just get 2. This is a non-x term, so we take the derivative, we get 1, but then we times by dy dx because this is a non-x term. So we're going to write this out right here. So this work, I have it written right here. Again, it's 2x times dy dx, and then plus, and then we have the 2y. The derivative of 4y squared is going to be 8y, and then we times by dy dx. And finally, the derivative of 12 is 0. At this point, we want our dy dx terms on one side and our non-dy dx terms on the other side of the equation. And just because I'm noticing it right now, every term in the equation has a factor of 2, so I'm going to divide the whole equation by 2. Next, we're going to factor out dy dx, and finally, we're going to divide this expression out from both sides of the equation. So again, the problem wanted us to find an equation of a tangent line to the curve at the given point. So here's our expression for slope. We have our point. We're going to take x and y and plug them in to find slope. So now we have slope is negative 1 half, and our point is 2, 1. So let's go ahead and plug those into point slope form. So here's the equation of the tangent line. We have y minus 1 equals negative 1 half times the quantity x minus 2. This example says find y prime if sine of x plus y equals x squared times cosine of y. So we're still taking the derivative implicitly with respect to x. It's just that instead of writing dy dx, we're going to write y prime. So we'll start here on the left, the derivative of sine of x plus y. We're going to use the chain rule. So we take the derivative of the outside function, so the derivative of sine is cosine, and we leave the inside function the same. Next, we times by the derivative of the inside function. So again, using implicit differentiation, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of y is going to be 1, but then we times by y prime. Right here we have a product, so we're going to use the product rule, and I'm going to show my work over here on the right. The derivative of x squared is going to be 2x, and the derivative of cosine of y is going to be negative sine of y times by y prime. So we take the product of these and we add the product of these. So our next step is to get the y prime terms on the left side and the non-y prime terms on the right side. But you'll notice right here we have cosine of x plus y times the quantity 1 plus y prime. So in order to take care of this, we first need to take this expression and distribute it. So cosine of x plus y times 1 is just itself. And then cosine of x plus y times y prime is just the product of those. So now we can see our terms that have y prime. We're going to put both of them on the left side and the non-y prime terms on the right. Next step, we're going to factor out the y prime. And finally, we're going to divide this out from both sides. All right, so here's our final answer. This example says find dy dx by implicit differentiation. Given the equation e to the x divided by y equals x minus y. So to take the derivative of this expression on the left, the derivative of e to the anything is just itself, but then we're going to chain rule. So to chain rule, we're taking the derivative of the inside function, which is the x over y, and that requires the quotient rule. So we're going to go low, then d high, minus high, and d low is going to be the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of y is 1, and then we times by dy dx. And it's all over the low squared. On the right side of the equation, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of y is 1, and then we times by dy dx. Next, I want to split this fraction into two fractions, so we're going to rewrite it as y over y squared, which simplifies to 1 over y. Over here, we get negative x over y squared, and then it's all times by dy dx. By doing that, it helps us because we can now distribute this e to the x over y to both of these terms. And now finally, we can move our dy dx terms to the left side of the equation and our non-dy dx terms to the right side of the equation. Okay, I tried to simplify that up a little bit better. Um, so this negative dy dx is now here, and right here we had e to the x over y times x over y squared, so I kind of just wrote it as one big fraction times by dy dx. And then this expression is moved over here as negative e to the x over y all over y. So I'm going to factor out dy dx. So before isolating the dy dx, I want to combine this to one fraction, and I want to combine this to one fraction by making common denominators. So over here, we're going to put this over 1, and we're going to times it by y squared over y squared. 
By doing so, now we have common denominators. So one times y squared is just y squared. So we're gonna go y squared minus x e to the x over y. And then again, they have common denominators. So we can leave it over that same denominator. Similarly, over here, we're gonna times this by y over y. So now one times y is just y. And now we can go y minus e to the x over y all over y. At this point, to isolate the dy dx, we're going to multiply by this reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply both sides of the equation by y squared over y squared minus x e to the x over y. So next we can take this y and this y squared and reduce them. And here's our final answer, dy dx equals y times the quantity y minus e to the x over y all over y squared minus x e to the x over y. Next we're gonna take the second derivative implicitly you can see you have notation either y double prime or this is Leibniz's notation for a second derivative, d2y over dx squared. So to do this implicitly, I wrote out some steps. It says take the first derivative implicitly with respect to x. Then once you isolate that y prime or dy dx, you're gonna take the second derivative implicitly with respect to x. And what you'll find is you'll have an expression with y prime or dy dx in it. And when you have that, you're gonna substitute the answer that you got from part one into that so you're no longer left with that symbol and you should have an expression with just x and y. And then finally, you'll simplify everything. And the last thing you wanna kinda of watch out for is sometimes you'll have part of your expression either by factoring um, or you'll see it right there, but sometimes you'll see the expression from the original problem. And so then you'll substitute in one last time. This example says find d2y over dx squared, which is again Leibniz's notation for the second derivative. And it says we're given 2x cubed minus 3y squared equals 8. And we're going to do this implicitly with respect to x. So the derivative of 2x cubed is going to be 6x squared. The derivative of this term is going to be negative 6y. And because it's a non-x term, we're going to times by dy dx. And the derivative of 8 is 0. Next, we're going to isolate the dy dx. So I subtracted this term over, and then finally we're gonna divide out the negative six y. So our first derivative is x squared over y. So now we're gonna take the second derivative. So we have this expression, it's a fraction, so we're gonna use the quotient rule. So we're gonna go low, then d high minus high, and d low is gonna be the derivative of y is one, but then we times by dy dx, and it's all over low squared. Okay, I rewrote this as 2xy minus x squared over y squared, and then, so you don't wanna leave this dy dx here. We just found that dy dx is x squared over y, so we're gonna substitute this right here. All right, so at this point, we want to combine these into one fraction, so we need common denominators. We're gonna multiply this fraction by y on top and bottom. So this is gonna make 2xy squared minus x to the fourth all over y. So now we have one fraction divided by y squared. So we're gonna put this y squared over one, and then we're gonna multiply this by this reciprocal or copy dot flip. And here's our final answer. I just double checked if I were to factor out x on top, we'd be left with two y squared minus x cubed, and that's not written in this original problem. So we're going to leave our answer like this. Because again, even if you factored out the x, it's not like it would reduce with anything in the denominator. So this is gonna be our final answer. So we have two x y squared minus x to the fourth all over y cubed. This example says find y double prime given x cubed plus y cubed equals one. So first step, we're gonna take the first derivative implicitly with respect to x. So the derivative of x cubed is three x squared. The derivative of y cubed is gonna be three y squared, and then we're gonna times by y prime, and the derivative of one is zero. Next, we're gonna isolate the y prime, and we get y prime is equal to negative x squared over y squared. To find y double prime, we're going to take the derivative of this, and it's gonna require the quotient rule. So we start low d high, then we go minus high, and then we do d low. So the derivative of the denominator is gonna be two y times y prime, and it's all over the low squared. So I simplified it up a little bit right here. I wrote negative two x y squared, and then over here I wrote positive two x squared y y prime all over y to the fourth. Next, we wanna get rid of this y prime, so we're gonna substitute negative x squared over y squared in for it. And at this point, we wanna make common denominators. We're gonna multiply this by y over y. So now we can take this fraction and we can multiply by the reciprocal of this guy or copy, dot, and flip. So we get to here, and at this point, I wanna factor out the negative two x from both of these terms. So we have this expression, negative two x times the quantity y cubed plus x cubed all over y to the fifth. 
and I want to look above at the original problem. The original problem said that x cubed plus y cubed equals 1, so that means we can replace this with the value 1. So our final answer is negative 2x over y to the fifth.